morning, Excellency, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome once again to Cambodia Global Dialogue of Southeast Asia TV. Uh, for those who have not watched the show before, let me just say the gist a bit about this program. We try to bring uh, personality from different parts of the world, uh, also from the region and from the country, from Cambodia, to come and try to discuss some thematics that have some uh, effect, consequence, relevance to the Cambodian economy and how we can learn from this experience, from this personality and we hope that through this frank exchange we'll be able to extract uh, some spontaneous idea that, that is coming out from years of experience of that particular personality. And uh, today we are discussing a theme that is uh, quite uh, novel to a lot of people. Uh, they are they know a lot about uh, free market, socialist market, but uh, today we want to explore a, a, a sort of like new economic model that uh, maybe it's not new, but it's called a social market economy. Uh, and we have the pleasure and the honor to have with us uh, Professor Robo. Professor, welcome to the show. Hello. Yes. Uh, so we, we, we hope to be able to uh, learn a bit what is the social market economy? And uh, Professor Robo has been, uh, you know, uh, teaching in, in, in Germany. But before we go to that, maybe I want to give you the floor to, to say a bit about yourself, Professor. Yeah, thank you very much. As you know, I'm teaching economics in the eastern part of Germany. And uh, my research interest is economic systems, different types of market economies central planning systems, transformation from the centrally planning systems to market economies. And of course, my main topic, as you mentioned already, is a social market economic approach. So I'm very happy uh, to be here and that we can talk about social market economy. Great. Well, you know, people know, particularly in Cambodia, we talk about free market. We came from, you know, uh, before the Paris Peace Accord, it was a socialist uh, market uh, uh, economy. And now you are injecting uh, some new idea to say, but there is something we call social market economy. What is it? I mean, for me, I, I know a bit about it because we have the pleasure to have a good debate, but maybe you should demystify a bit this notion so that uh, the public, the audience, know what we're talking about. First of all, we have to state that the social market economy is not a socialist market economy. It's not a third way between socialism on the one side and capitalism on the other side. But it's a special type of a free market economy. A free market economy combined with a strong state. The state has uh, to set uh, incentives, the state has to set a legal framework for the actors, economic actors. For example, the state has to provide public goods, uh, it has to provide uh, basic uh, social security uh, and competition law, antitrust policy and things like that. You're teaching in Germany, so maybe I should start by saying, but what is the German economic model? Each uh, real economy is a mixed economy, a mix, yeah. so we have uh, to distinguish uh, real types and models uh, of economic systems. Mm -hmm. I think nowadays the uh, German uh, economic system is a welfare state, like mm -hmm. the Scandinavian welfare states and most uh, welfare states in, in Europe. But um, decades ago, after mm. the Second World War, we introduced the social market economy. And I think in the 1950s, 60s in Germany, the real economic system was very close to the idea of the social market economy. And why the shift to a welfare state? And when was that shift? This shift was uh, in the 1970s. Um, because of the rise of Keynesianism at this time and uh, in the 1980s, 90s, we tried to, uh, to bring our system back to a social market economy, but it's quite hard. If you start to spend a lot of money on social issues, then all market systems tend to become a welfare state. I think that's a typical prob problem. 
Would, would you say the same about Japanese market uh, or the French economy? Uh, are they also welfare state? Yeah, for sure. I think so, too. Yeah. That's a typical model of uh, modern capitalism in a lot of countries in the Western world. Maybe not the United States mm -hmm. and other Anglo-Saxon countries, but continental Europe, Japan, too. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. so. So, is it by default because they have the resource to go to a, a, a welfare uh, system because the resource you can spend. Yes, yes, you're so absolutely right. You need a lot of money to spend such a lot of money for social issues. And if you don't have, there is uh, no possibility for you to become a welfare state. That's, for example, a good argument why Cambodia will not become a welfare state during the next decade because yes, you don't yes. have so much money. Exactly, exactly. I, speaking of uh, the Cambodia win in Southeast Asia, within Asia, any, any country in the region that is uh, uh, sort of like resorting to this model of social market economy? At the moment, I don't think so. You don't think so? No. Um, you must know that social market economy is really a model, an idea mm. of a market economy. Yes. And as I said before, uh, all these real uh, economies are mixed systems. Yes. Uh, I think uh, in the reality we can see at the moment quite free market economies, mm. yes. Anglo-Saxon style yes. and uh, welfare states in continental Europe mm. and different mixed types mm. of capitalist systems in Asia, yes. like the socialist market economy in Vietnam and China and so on. Yeah. In your research and on Cambodia, you've been here a few times, uh, what, what is your perception of uh, Cambodian uh, market economy? Uh, Cambodia is a very interesting case be for me because I'm very interested in transformation processes. Yes. And that's why I'm very thankful to Conrad Adefer in our foundation, uh, which invited me several times here to Cambodia, that I can see this transformation mm. process here. I think during the last 20 years, you made a lot of steps into the right direction mm. of a market economy. But of course, there's a lot to do for your country. Mm. I don't think that Cambodia at the moment is really a market economy. Mm. It's on its way to become mm. a market economy. Mm. And that's why you have to think about, let's say, a fine tuning yes. uh, to a free market yes. or to a social market mm. uh, model or where mm. else. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I, I read a bit about, uh, you know, how you define what the thesis behind social market economy. I see a lot of a similarity of what uh, this country, Cambodia, since the Paris Peace Accord, you know, uh, where uh, for those who have read the Paris Peace Accord, you can see the Washington consensus, uh, uh, you know, imprint all over the place. Uh, and since for since 91 now we are exactly 20 years you see this transformation uh, and a lot of this transformation is pretty much along the line of a, a market economy uh, I, I think the state is is very much a, a resource limitation aside the state is doing a lot of work you know for 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 the welfare of the people and uh, one of the effect that which i think that we we could claim as an achievement is that in the early 90s, you know, we, we have about 50% poverty. Now, 20 years later, we're down to about 27% poverty rate, right? So it means that we have about more than 1% of poverty reduction per year. So something is working, you know? Something is working That's along great. the line, right? Yeah. right? So what's your impression on the, 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 the Cambodian uh, market economy development, but do you see any trace of uh, or some sense of some appearance of social market economy? I think at the moment not really. Mm. You're on the right path, yeah. that's right, but uh, from a point of view of social market economy, there's a lot to do here. Mm. For example, you don't have a competition law, yes. uh, land ownership uh, mm. problems, mm. Uh, no stock market, Everything, uh, basic institutions mm. uh, of each type of market economy mm. at all. Mm. And uh, of course also the implementation of mm. all the laws mm. you adopted okay. uh, is not yeah. yes. really done at the moment. Wouldn't, wouldn't you say that it is a, a progression then? You know that 
20 years ago we start, we are developing an economy, we are trying to build institutions, some we have built, some we are in the process, mentioning the stock exchange, uh, in this year we'll have a stock exchange, uh, many law was adopted, some are still in the book, some are being implemented. Uh, don't you think that it, it is a progression uh, toward uh, the a social market economy? That isn't it a fact that you have to be a free market economy first before you can go to the next step, which is social free market economy? I don't think uh, the free market economy is a first step and social market economy is a second step. You can okay. decide. Okay. You have to decide in the first beginning of your transformation process or during the transformation yes. process what's the goal of our transformation. Mm. And I think you should choose a social market economy model because it's useful for Cambodia because the main goal of this system is mm. prosperity for all. Yes. Not only for a few people yes. but for all. Yes. And as you ask, yes, I think you can see a progress, but you started at a zero level mm, 20 okay. years ago. Sure. Yeah? Sure. And as you said, 1% less poverty a year, that's yeah. great. Mm. But Cambodia is one of the poorest economies worldwide, mm. also nowadays. Yes. So yes. there is a lot to do and find it just your uh, thinking about economic systems for the future. Of course, it will take time, a lot of time. Yes. Uh, Budget limitation is an issue, uh, resource limitation issue, and uh, multi-priority, you know, within the development uh, context of the country. So, so the dilemma of being a least developed country, uh, which I think uh, we are now about 870 some dollar uh, per GDP capita now. So, in a few years time, you know, we may surpass this 1,000 US dollar uh, mark which may define that we are not in a more at least developed country. Uh, but still, you know, being a small country, being a, a country that is emerging from years of, uh, of war, of uh, civil uh, crisis, uh, where infrastructure has is, is been demolished, the physical infrastructure, the economic infrastructure, the social infrastructure, to me, I still think that we've done quite well in, in the 20 years, right? Maybe we have not reached uh, the, the optimum yet, but I think if you look at a, a path, the path is quite clear that we are on the positive path. Uh, the trick is how do you tweak so that you, know, you, you can turn this uh, economic growth, this uh, prosperity into something that can be enjoyed by a larger societal membership. Is that what you're saying? I think you are on the right path, that's right, but as I can see also very basic problems you mm. have, uh, mm. problems which must be solved immediately, mm. for example the corruption problem mm. or lacks in civil society, uh, the problem of uh, not uh, under consolidated uh, control of the military forces maybe. Um, when I read the literature about uh, Cambodia's development, I can see this progress uh, you are describing, of course. But on the other side, I must say, uh, you have to go a very, very long path to become a real market economy. So it will take a lot of time and uh, at the same time, nowadays you have uh, to choose the direction where you have to go and also I think you have to speed up yeah. because in Germany it took 10 to 15 years to introduce social market economy. Now we but, are but, 20 but, years. But, yeah, but I, I, I think the difference is that Germany have resource. You know, in our case, resource is an issue. We, we don't have adequate resource. And when we have resource, we are torn between spending that resource on many different uh, top priority issue on health, on education, on, uh, on things that demand immediate attention from the government, right? But I, I, I would say that, you, you see, in a society, again, it, you can say that, well, it's very easy to start from zero base, right? You see, human resource is probably the most difficult to acquire as a matter of time, unlike financial resource where you can you do the right policy, you attract FDI. FDI come, bring job, bring employment, set up a factory, 
and then you import technology, then you produce something, you know, uh, with the right standard, you export to Europe, you export to America or Japan, right? But the context of Cambodia, that's why sometimes I, I, I sort of plead for, for people to understand that the, the will to move fast is there. The that will to move fast right. is there. But, but it's more this inherent weakness in the development of our human uh, resources. Because, you know, to be in a position to, uh, so like, to be an active, efficient actor in society, you need to be well educated. And education, a master, a bachelor, or PhD, take years, right? Yeah. And having even a master or PhD without real life experience, real life exposure, will, will also take time. But the good thing, the way I see in the last, uh, you mentioned the word transformation in the last six or seven years, particularly after the accession to WTO, where we have a big increase of uh, economic interest into the country, uh, foreign direct investment, you see an emergence of a strong middle class, uh, I would say medium to high uh, educated middle class, which I think, I hope that this medium and, uh, and uh, middle class there will form the basis for the further deeper transformation of a Cambodian that is more performing because we're capable, because we're more educated, we're more, we're more exposed to the rest of the world. So in, in, in that sense, I, I, I feel that, you know, we, you know we, we have built the element and how do we move forward, you know, in the context of a, a post-economic uh, crisis where we need to be competitive, we need to be a bit more aggressive in attracting foreign direct investment. So, so I think all in all, I, I feel that uh, we are progressing. Yeah. Uh, maybe you may want to say something because you, you do raise a, a few theses in your uh, you know, social market economy. You mentioned a lot about development strategy, right? which, uh, which way you go. Uh, and then there are other element which you, you mentioned, which is about, uh, for example, inst institution, for example. I'm a firm believer of uh, institution, right? I mean, Douglas North, institution matter, right? Exactly. But, yeah. but I, I do say that institution matter only when the institution is strong, right? Uh, in this case, institution is strong only when you have competent, you know, people that form the, the, the fabric of that institution. That's why education is so important, not only education in the broad sense, but also education about the idea of social market economy, about the basic institutions of market economies. Mm. The people must learn to live within a framework of a market economy. Yeah. And uh, after decades of socialism, of course, mm. it's quite hard to learn all these abilities. Mm. It takes time. Yeah. We have uh, seen that that also in Central and Eastern European transformation mm. states, that it takes time. It's also a question of a special culture of a country. Yeah. Um, you mentioned Cambodia doesn't have a stock exchange yet. I say we're about to have a stock exchange uh, this year. Uh, what is it that stock exchange matters so much in, in the context of this notion of a social market economy? You need a functioning capital market. It's a basic thing for each type of market economy. Without a functioning capital market, a functioning labor market and a functioning uh, market of commodities and services, a market economy cannot work at all. But you so, know, but you cannot really say that in the last 20 years our, our market doesn't work. We are thriving. Uh, without a stock um, market, we have a banking system, we have financial market, we have uh, you know, uh, many sectoral, uh, you know, sector, you know, a real sector that are, are thriving uh, without a, a, a stock exchange. Of what, what would that stock exchange bring something that we don't have it now? It would bring additional capital in your country and it would improve the distribution of capital in your country. That's the main point here. Of course, uh, also a system without stock market, without labor market is able to exist. Mm -hmm. 
but it's a better system, a better working okay, system okay. with stock market functioning, labor market okay. and so on. And you cannot call it really a market economy mm. if there is no stock market mm. and no functioning mm. Uh, mm. labor market and so on. No, we, we, I, I think we are missing a point here. You mentioned social market economy, I say market economy, but there's somewhere, I think there's this word free, free market. You know, what is it? In, in, in you say market economy, then it is free market. You are, you are. The free market economy is only one special type mm. of a market economy. Yes. Yeah. Without a strong state, in mm. a free market economy, you don't need a strong state. Yeah. yeah? The state is doing nothing, mm. nothing for the people and the and market. Yeah, less affair. Market uh, shall solve all the problems. But as we know, the market is only able to solve problems if there exists a strong state setting a framework for the activities uh, of the economic actors. That's necessary. We have seen this during the crisis. Mm. I think the laissez-faire system failed. Mm. We have seen it during the economic crisis that uh, laissez-faire uh, is combined with a lot of problems for mm. the people. And especially Cambodia is a mm. poor country, so mm. I think this idea of prosperity for everyone, mm. not only for a small class mm. uh, of people, is very important, is a very good idea mm. for a country like Cambodia. Sure, sure. Uh, but, but, you know, everything has to be taken into a, a relative uh, perspective. You know, uh, you, know you, you, you cannot expect that, you know, Cambodia would jump from a zero or ten percent base to a, the optimum uh, uh, utopia. I mean, if, if I can exaggerate a bit the picture, uh, in, in institution will 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 grow, will get established, law will get passed, law will get understood before it be implemented. And as you know, you know, uh, in the case of Cambodia, where we start embracing this uh, economic liberalization. We, we are submerged by so many different new economic concepts, uh, uh, new trade concepts, new uh, labor concepts. And the absorptive capacity for the country is, is, is yeah, I would say, we're doing quite well for a country that is not equipped right, to, 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 wel to welcome such an overwhelming in influx, right? uh, bear in mind. We have about 3,000 civil society organizations in Cambodia. Every institution, international organization, they're all here. So Cambodia is a sort of like a, a melting pot of a lot of uh, external factors that inject different elements, a different idea. So the trick is Cambodia needs time to digest what is good for us. You know, and I think ultimately we would need to weave out things that looks good but may not apply, things that looks good and it could be applied but maybe not that efficient, and then ultimately look for something that looks good, can be applied and that can thrive. To me the metaphor is like, you know, if I have a land on uh, the Mekong River and I have a nice, uh, uh, sort of like uh, mango trees, you know, it grow well, you know, a lot of mango, and I say, well, it looks good, the mango must be good. Uh, the trees must be good. Then I dig it, I transport it to my house in another place in a dry land, and then six months later on, my mango tree die. Is that the mango, or is that the saw, or is that a combination of the mango and the saw? Uh, uh, professor, I, I read uh, you, your thesis on uh, social market economy. You mentioned, you know, about 10 items, right? You know, social market is preferable development strategy for Cambodia, right? I mean, that, that's, that's your, your opening theme, you know, uh, is preferable. Uh, does it mean that, you know, we, we are doing something good already, but we could do better? Maybe, uh, yes. Uh, as we uh, said before, uh, Cambodia is for sure uh, on the right path, uh, but uh, 
At this moment, I think it's necessary uh, to improve uh, the strategy of your transformation process. I observed this transformation process a little bit uh, by reading the literature uh, on Cambodia. And uh, from the one side, it's really impressive to see what you have already done. Mm. But uh, from another side, of course, there's a lot to do. Mm. And uh, so I think uh, that you should speed up a little mm. bit mm. Uh, because your gradual uh, mm. process of transformation took already mm. 20 years. Mm. Okay. And institutions okay. don't okay. cost money. Yes. Good. So I, I think, uh, Professor, I, I, I really enjoyed this uh, uh, philosophical uh, economic uh, discussion. You know, I'm not an economist, so I probably wouldn't be able to uh, appreciate the Canadian or whatever other economic model. But all I can say that, just for my quick conversation, uh, what you say about social market economy, uh, Cambodia is, is doing a lot of these things. Uh, you just mentioned that we have a 20-year you know, developmental stage already, you know, it, 20 years, that's a long time, that now maybe it's time to speed up at a much more exponential pace, right? Yeah. So, so on that, I concur. I concur that the element for growth is there. The, the, the human resource that we see the younger generation uh, educated are coming back to the country. I see a, a, a growing, a steady growth of uh, a middle class, uh, more so a class bourgeois. Uh, and to me, with a class bourgeois, there'll be more uh, so like appreciation of economic freedom, of uh, so like uh, things that a normal uh, farmer, I mean, if, if I can use that analogy, you know, would, would not appreciate. You know, you mentioned stock market, say, so, wow. I mean, uh, who will play stock market? Who, who invest stock market? You know, it will have to start from this uh, base, which is this class bourgeois, which is this middle class, which I think I can see every day is growing, uh, more educated, more involved, uh, younger. So this is where the hope of, uh, of uh, Cambodia in terms of uh, having a young labor market that will grow with the country. Uh, perhaps I would uh, close this uh, program uh, by, by saying that, um, you know, we are on the right track. You know, we, we have made a journey of 20 years, you know, moving from the Washington Consensus, being a good student of the Washington Consensus. Uh, but we're reaching a point where economically we're quite stable. We've been able to drop our poverty rate down. And perhaps time to rethink a bit, how do we want, you know, our future to look like? A more inclusive future, uh, a more uh, sort of like a equalized future, uh, where prosperity is spread uh, much more with, with the mass. Uh, but at the same time, how do we ensure that this uh, growth is sustained? You know, so that uh, you know, from the sustainability of the growth, we, we will receive the benefit for uh, the betterment of, for all Cambodia as a whole. Perhaps I, I would con conclude a you know, short discussion uh, uh, by saying that. So once again, Professor, I want to say thank you for coming to, to share with us this very interesting uh, concept of so-called social market economy. And I hope I myself learned something from that today. So, Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, we're coming to the end of our program. Uh, 30 minutes is always too short for a, a concept like today, what we discussed today. But uh, this is the beginning of a dialogue, and uh, we hope to uh, discuss more on other economic issues in our next uh, uh, program next week. Good night.